Alrighty, y'all. Welcome to Ellis Mowers. We're going to try and get another push mower turned around here today. Um, part of this lot of 11 that I got. I've trimmed it down. I've already got three or four of them fixed so far. So um, we're working on this one now. This one is a Troy built 21 inch self propel big wheel back or big back wheels push mower. It's got the Briggs Quantum engine on it, probably 6.75 horsepower. Um, Self propel does. I don't know if the self propel is working. It may just need to be, have the cable freed up on it, or may just need something freed up because it doesn't want to. Usually, when you pull pull it back, whenever you engage the self propel, the back wheels are supposed to lock, or the front wheels are supposed to lock. Excuse me, and uh, these aren't. So this Briggs engine, the pull rope side of it. And I could put a pull rope in it, but what I'm going to do, I've got another. I've got one that's blown right here, so I'm just going to pop that pull rope on it just for expediency. Um, don't know the situation with the carburetor. I'll give you the numbers on the engine real quick, though. So this one was made in 2005, January 10th, 050110. Cables the cable for the drive works it's not the best i'll just give it a little bit of lube though and that should fix it up some um what else do we have going here we have check the air filter situation i knew i do know that the engine has compression the air filter is totally usable Gas, did not have a gas cap on it, so I feel like there's some water in it, but we'll find out. First thing I'm going to do, oh, it's got one of the E3 spark plugs on it. I know that a lot of people love to hate them things. My thing is, as long as it sparks, that's all I care about. It's got a little crud in there. The plug is in there, though. I just need to make it fit on there a little bit tighter. Um, oil. It's got a decent amount of oil in it, it looks like. Grab a rag and let's check. Yeah, decent amount of oil. I don't know if it's got fuel in it or not. You know, at this point, I'm just kind of in the catching up process. So instead of really going in meticulously, I'm kind of cannibalizing and taking parts off of ones that are going to be longer fixes. Oh yeah, we've got enough oil in there to start it up. And uh, so yeah, let me get into, let me just take some pliers and tighten that lead down a little bit on the spark plug. I'm going to take a couple of quarter inch bolts off right there. That way I can take the cover off and we can make sure that the self propel is operational. If not, we'll take it off and just make it a regular push mower and sell it for about $50 to $60. does have a little hole in the deck. I'm not really concerned about that. Um, even with the self-propel, probably about an $80 mower. So I'm just trying to get it in, get it, get it out, get it gone, if you know what I mean. Um, again, $80 is more than I paid for the entire lot of push mowers that I got here. And I've already sold, I've only sold one of them. I've only sold one of them as I'm filming here. Um, another one's going to be going, oh, the big wheel push mower, I think I let go for 80 or 90. So I've already made my money back on those. Um, that was a lawn boy push mower. That was part of it. It should be leaving for like 120 to 130. That push mower will be leaving for 60 out there. So we're making money back on them. Um, but I'll go ahead and do what I was uh, saying I was going to do with this real quick. And uh, we'll get on rolling with it. Alrighty, y'all. Since I've shown y'all a couple of times and selfishly want to listen to my copyrighted music while I do this, 5 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths. And a 3 8 gets you gets your gas tank off. 
And then you have a 3 eighths that's supposed to be here. That's not a 3 eighths. And then a 3 eighths here and a 3 eighths on the other side. It'll pull this engine cover off. Make sure your pull rope is off of your handle up there whenever you do that. And uh, once you do all that, you should have all this off. Um, and while we're in there, we'll check the flywheel key and make sure that it is good as well. Um, when I get to that point, I'll catch back up with y'all. Alrighty, y'all, I got the new parts on, like I mentioned. I just swapped them off because I got an engine that's blown in there. Um, the cover and the gas tank had the gas cap on. The other one didn't have the gas cap. I cleaned this area out a little bit just to get it, you know, better. The self propel seems to be working like it kind of supposed to be. Although it's not locking whenever I pull it backwards. That could be because of the the wheels might be stripped I'm not sure um, this thing might start it might not we'll find out here in just a second though and also I mentioned I was gonna check the flywheel key the flywheel nut is very very rusted and so I didn't want to venture into trying that unless I had to so if this thing's pulling you know pulling the mess out of my arm indicating a flywheel issue we'll look at it Somebody really had it throttled down, as you can tell right there. So I pulled this out to throttle it up some. So that should help. Sounds like it's not running, except on starter fluid. So we'll have to either break into this carb or. I know I got another one on the bench that works fine. I think we just had a little bit of water in the bowl we got that purged out and it looks like it's running all right now uh, i'm gonna let it run for a little bit i don't see that the self propel is working i think it is because the wheels are potentially stripped on the inside so i'm gonna let this run for a minute i'm gonna grab some tools and i'm gonna investigate why it's not running let's see if it restarts first. oh yeah very nice Oh, 
bit, it just won't engage the drive. But you can see it trying to. So let me see if I have an issue with the drive wheels. And if they're stripped, I'm almost positive I've got a couple that'll work. So as long as the gears and such are on there too, hopefully they are. Um, so let me get do that. Uh, we'll see what the wheels look like on the inside whenever I uh, pull them off here. In just a second. Alrighty, y'all. Let me show you what's going on here. So I'm fairly positive that this self-propel mechanism is shot because I've got it the wheels are good I'll show you that like you can see the wheels are great on the inside but you turn the see I have it relatively tight back there with the handle and the and the cable is pulling it but it's not engaging any sort of self-propel mechanism so what I'm going to do, because I'm fairly sure, I might fiddle around with this a little bit more, but uh, I'm fairly sure that the, the, the trans is stripped, although the axle still works. Moving the, well there, well there, you can see the pulley moving a little bit. But nothing, nothing really to amount to anything. So you can see it. It's supposed to be moving right there, but it stops. And I think that wheel right there has got some slippage on it. So let me try one more thing real quick though, while I'm at it. Because if this is the main drive wheel and it's slipping, which it shouldn't be because it has great traction on the wheel there too. As you can see, it's very, very intermittent. Actually, that's slipping on something. You can see it, feel it slipping right there. So it's almost like the teeth inside this axle are stripped. So that's moving backwards and it should be moving forwards like this. And you can feel it slipping right there, right? And slipping. You can see it's not smooth like this one over here. I don't know if I can do this. You can see this one's smooth. So what I'm going to do, this one's a relatively easy change because all I have to do is take these four bolts off right here for the um, for the wheels, and the whole front axle should just come off after I do that. See that right there? Might be a little bit of a challenge because they're rusted. I should be able to do the same thing with this mower as well. Um, like I said, I'm not 100% sure. I've never really actually swapped out an entire self-propel system on one of these mowers before. So this is a new thing for me. Um, this one's got two extra bolts right there that I'll have to loosen up. Because the... the um, on that one over there, the updated model, it's self-contained as opposed to this one where it's actually got a mounting bracket on there. As you can see, the deck is pretty, looking pretty rough right here. Um, again, this mower is not going to be more than about 70, 80 bucks. So, I don't really even need to do that. But So, that's my plan of attack. We will take off. 
I'll lube them up first, but we will take off these rusted out bolts right here. These rusted bolts. Hopefully get this front axle off. Once we get the front axle off, we'll go and swap it onto that deck and see if we have any good, uh, good action going here. Same exact deck, same everything. So let me do that. Um, I'll tell you how I get into these bolts here in a minute. Uh, might be a little difficult, but we'll get in there. All right, so on the small wheel one, it was just these four bolts right here, and all I did was I took the wheels off. I did scrub the wheels while I was at it. Um, all I did was pull this plastic back. I used a half inch with a 9 16 inch bit on it on the outside and a 9 16 inch wrench on the inside to hold it and all four of them came out and now we have a self propel mechanism to put on to this one so I'm going to really jack this one up here I might pull it in the garage as well but this one has an additional step on the bottom. You have two, two bolts, I believe they're three eighths. Just gotta take them off. They'll probably break off after I try and pull them off. Again, we're just trying to give this mower a little bit of life as well. Bless me. And again, make the self propel work. Because, I mean, the cable's good. Yeah, that. I mean, it's pulling itself back there, so that's all we need it to do. It's just the gears and the self-propeller shot, apparently, because you can feel it slip in there when I was turning the wheels. So, I'm going to do the same thing to this as I just did to the other one, and then we'll put it back on the exact same way. It's really easy. I'll show you how to do the cables and stuff as well when I do that. All right, y'all. I figured some of you might like to watch me going at it here um, so we'll go ahead and put this new axle on I've already taken the four bolts off and then the other two bolts that I mentioned right here on the top for this little plate that was on this this particular mower so now I'm just taking the cable off of it I'm just going to push the tabs in Pull the, pull the cable out. You might turn it sideways to get a better grip on it. Alright, there we go. That's the cable. The cable's in good shape. The cable's in very good shape, actually. So, here comes the axle. One other thing of note is that the little shroud also attaches to those four bolts that you're going to be taking off. So you're going to have to put that shroud back on under the deck. Let me get the other. Sorry, allergies are getting to me today it seems like. Um, so now... Time to pop this bad boy in. Let's go there that way. Pretty sure. Let's see. Oh, the goes on the outside, that's why I'm having trouble. Sorry. I'm just sliding this on now. Trying to mock it up roughly. Alright. So. There's the transaction. It fits basically right on there. So what I'm going to do first is get these four bolts in. So 
because my, my jack stand is kind of messing this up because I had I have the jack stand on it so I can look at it a little bit easier here. Now what I'm trying to do is get it through that shroud there. I haven't even gotten it quite through the hole for the... There it goes. Now I'll get it on the shroud. Trial and error, guys. Trial and error. Alright, bolt in. Bolt in. Let's try the shroud now. I got the jack stem on the very, very, very edge. Again, this is trial type stuff here. I've never done this before, so we're working together on it. We're getting there, though. Alright, let me pop this first nut in. That way I don't leave anything else. It's a very tight fit up there too, so that's... Doesn't make things easier, that's for sure. Sorry, the camera is not at the optimal angle for y'all to see this. I'm literally just trying to thread the thread a bolt in to a nut. Not the easiest. That's for sure. Tell you what, I'm not gonna waste camera time. You have to thread that pretty, you know, evenly in there. Once I get that in and get those four things bolted down, we'll continue with this. Alrighty, y'all. So, like I said, I just put those four bolts in. I wasn't gonna waste camera time on just showing how to do that. Um, got those in. Probably need to bend those back a little bit, but you know what? We're doing all right um otherwise and then this is a little bit different because it doesn't mount right here it's actually self-contained it's got that spring right there that holds the tension on the belt and then the routing of the self propels a little bit different with the cable so i loosen the cable and i don't know if i can show you all i might just put you down and i'm just going to pull i've got the spark plug undone I'm just gonna pull the handle and i'll let y'all see those wheels turn i've got the self-propel turn as well. So, here we go. You 
see it. You see it's moving there. Now I'm going to take the self propel off and you'll see that it's not going to move. So, in theory, after I put the wheels back on it, this should work. And if it does, I'll pop this back on, give it a good wash, um, and hopefully, I'll have I'll have a buyer. Um, I had a similar one, the one that you y'all saw at the beginning of the video. Somebody was on the way to to buy, and uh, sold it. Another guy wanted it, but he couldn't come until later in the afternoon. So I'm going to be like, hey, look, I'll give you the same price, except you get big wheels. Obviously, the deck's not quite as nice as the other one, but it's still fully functional as a push mower. Um, I'll do the oil change and all that good stuff on it as well. It runs good. It's an auto choke. Um, so, yeah. Let me put the wheels back on it. I'll go ahead and put the cover back on it, because I know it's going to work. And... Uh, I'll give this thing a nice little test run. I might lube that up, lube that mechanism up a little bit and make it work a little bit better. But we'll give this thing a test run. All right, I want to test this thing out here. I think I put the spark plug back in. No, I already did. Might have to throw a little starting fluid in it to get it going. I do need to let this run for a little bit too, so. for a little bit just to make sure it purges any and all sort of water or other imperfections that it might be in the uh, gas and uh, then we'll clean it up maybe give it a nice little engine cover in there because I think I've got one and we'll give it a final look and a start see if it restarts <laughs> Self-propel, all right. Let it run, I'll catch on a few. I was going to show y'all how it was running, but the thing actually just quit on me. Um, it was running like da 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 Like it was not hitting a rev limiter, but just simply not getting the right... It's getting gas, it's just not getting, I don't think... So that's with it running like that. It wasn't doing that earlier, which makes me think that it could be a fuel issue. It could be a spark issue. So what I'm going to do, um, I'll check the carburetor first before I take off the flywheel key. 
and we'll see what kind of gunk there may be in the carburetor. Carburetor looks good, then we'll open that back up and try the flywheel key. So we'll see what we got. Alrighty, y'all. So I'll check the flywheel key. I don't know how well y'all can see that. But it looks like it is ever so slightly sheared. I mean, the slightest. One would think. Because you see it kind of in the in the groove there and it's just on the very edge of it so i feel like that is causing some issues potentially so i'm gonna take because it doesn't sound like a fuel issue the way that, that it was running you hear it it wasn't surging it was going bah, 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 like it was running on choke however The choke is all the way open so I don't know like when the choke was open it was joint going like that bah, 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 like you could hear it so and when I closed it a little bit it would fix itself and it wasn't running rich it wasn't blowing black smoke out so let me see if I can get this flywheel off and maybe give it a couple of swift bangs with a hammer and um, put a new flywheel key and we'll see if this old one is sheared Alrighty, I'll have changed course. <laughs> this flywheel is rusted on to the point where it will not be coming off. Looking at the flywheel key, it looks to be that it's not sheared after I cleaned it up a little bit more. I did find, I don't know if you can see it, a little bit of water in the uh, carburetor whenever I pulled it off and cleaned it. So now I'm in the process of putting it back on. And hopefully, because I mean it was running fine for a while and then when I went to crank it back up it doesn't seem like it wants to run right and I know I've got this little spring rigged on here as well spring really isn't that important except for the fact that whenever you turn the turn it off it actually helps retract the choke to make sure to make it so that it will uh, work so let's pop this back on pop these arms and stuff back on we'll give it another try to see if just simply draining the carb out worked. I'm hoping so. I really am, because I really would like to get some stuff going around here and continue working on things instead of wasting some time. But um, it's not, this really isn't wasting time anyways. I just, you feel the pressure whenever you got stuff leaving and you don't have stuff ready, you know, especially when I've told somebody that this would potentially be ready for them here in a couple of hours. I didn't make any promises, but just to try and keep things turning around. Um, let me finish buttoning this back up, and I will give it another run and see if it runs any better now. It sounded kind of like a timing issue, like I said, but water and the fuel would also do the same thing. So it's always a, a myriad of problems it could be with, with stuff like this. So. Let's just see what we got here, and um, I'll start it back up and see if uh, see if that issue went away for us. All right, so all that trouble ended up being just a little bit of water in the tank. The thing starts, runs, fine now. <laughs> Go figure, right? See if it'll start right back up for us. Awesome. 
again I probably ran this for about 15 minutes straight just to make sure that uh, no none of the other issues I probably put a good half a tank of gas in it too so this one I'm gonna message the guy about that originally came for another one or wanted to come for another one but couldn't get here until the afternoon see if he's interested in it I'll let him buy it for the same price because this one's got big wheels on it however it's got a little bit of rust issue on the deck um right there as you can see but i think for 70 bucks it is well worth it and uh he'll enjoy it if he decides to come get it if not i'll sell it to somebody else with no trouble cheap self-propelled mowers will fly off the shelf any day of the week thankfully and this one looks to be in good shape um that residue that you see here and around this area is yeah, that's all just lubricant that I used when I pulled the flywheel nut off. And uh, as you can tell, the flywheel key is not sheared. After I checked it, I was kind of hesitant as to, yeah, it might be, it might not be, it wasn't. And then especially after I couldn't get the flywheel off, I didn't want to try and damage it anymore. And uh, just called it a day. But one more time for good measure. So, um, the big deal on this one was we put the entire new cell propel front axle on it because the other one was slipping and broke. So, that was the big deal with this one. The running issues was just simply water in the fuel and me troubleshooting them. So, hopefully, y'all enjoyed all this. I appreciate y'all watching as always. We'll be working on the next mower project soon, but in the meantime, you can follow me at Ellis Mowers on Instagram and Facebook at Ellis Mowers 09 more specifically or you can search Ellis Mowers that'll get you what you need catch you on the next video